Welcome to another tutorial video. We're going to go back into financial statement analysis here and look at the cash conversion cycle, which is something that we have gotten a number of questions about. Now, the typical question goes something like this. Can you explain why the cash conversion cycle matters? I don't see it in most financial models. I can easily find the definition online, but why is it useful for valuing companies? And does anyone actually care about it in real life? So as usual, I'm going to give you the short answer to this question in a few minutes, and then we'll go into it and look at some more detailed examples and explanations after that. Now, if you want everything here in writing, along with the screenshots, the Excel models, and the PDFs, you can go to this URL on screen or just search for cash conversion cycle BIWS. I will also pin this in the comments and link to it below the video. We do have PDF extracts for Target and Costco here. So if you want to, you can make these calculations yourself using these files and follow along with everything we do here. So the cash conversion cycle, is defined as the day's inventory outstanding plus the day's sales outstanding minus the day's payable outstanding. In other words, how long does it take on average for a company to convert its inventory into cash after selling and delivering it to customers, then collecting the cash from those customers, and then finally paying the suppliers in cash? Because typically with inventory purchases, companies do not pay upfront in cash right away. Instead, they get the inventory on credit and then later on, when the invoices are due, they finally pay the suppliers in cash for whatever raw materials or parts that they needed to get the inventory and turn it into finished products. So you can also write it like this. You take the company's average inventory divided by its cost of goods sold, since that's where the inventory costs show up and multiply by the days in the period that gives you the days inventory outstanding. Then you take the average accounts receivable over the period, divide by the revenue in that period and multiply by the days in that period. That gives you the days sales outstanding. And then you subtract the average accounts payable in the period, divide by COGS and multiply by the days in that period. That gives you the days payable outstanding. So this just reflects the typical cycle for how any company dependent on inventory works, where they purchase the inventory, they need some time to sell it, and then they need time to collect the cash from customers and then more time to pay the suppliers. So if it takes 45 days to sell the inventory, you start with that. And then if it takes another 30 days to collect the cash from customers, the day's sales outstanding, you add those 30 days. And then if it takes 40 days to pay the suppliers, you subtract those 40 days and 45 plus 30 minus 40 equals 35 days for the cash conversion cycle here. Now, the shorter this cash conversion cycle, the more efficient the company is. Companies with negative cash conversion cycles are even better because it means they delay paying their suppliers until after they've sold the inventory and collected that cash from customers, which is usually viewed as very, very favorable. Now, in terms of the usefulness, you rarely use the cash conversion cycle directly in financial models or valuations. It's more of a benchmarking tool, and you might use it to evaluate to similar companies like the Target and Costco example that we're going into right here. It's more useful when you are analyzing or modeling startups, small businesses, or distressed companies that might have serious cash flow issues. In these cases, the cash conversion cycle might directly factor into the company's financing needs and tell you, for example, if the company might need a short-term loan or something else to boost its cash flow in the short term to afford the normal operating costs. And so you might see it in something like a debt versus equity model. So that's the short answer. Let's now go into some longer demonstrations and exercises. We'll start with the cash conversion cycle calculations for Target and Costco. Then we'll go into the valuation impact. And then I'll explain when the cash conversion cycle might be useful, giving you a simple Excel example here as well. So the calculations are pretty straightforward if you have the financial statements going back several years. Again, I've created extracts for both companies and you can download them at that link that I showed you in one of the first slides. It's also pinned below the video. You do have to be careful with the period. If you're using quarterly revenue or COGS, or you're looking at the average receivables over a quarter, you wanna use 90 days. But if you're working with full years, you wanna use 365 or 366 days. So let's go in and look at the calculations for Target. I already have them set up for Costco. So the starting point is to look at the average receivables, inventory and payables in each period. So we can just use some average functions to do this. I've already taken their accounts receivable, inventory, and payables from their previous financial statements. So let's just take all these and then we can copy these across. So now we have the average number in each year here. We're working with annual periods. And then you want to calculate the day's sales outstanding, the day's inventory outstanding, and the day's payable outstanding. So for the day's sales outstanding, you take the average receivables, you divide by the revenue in this period, and then you multiply by the number of days in this period. And since we have dates here at the top, 
we don't need to hard code anything. We can just go up and take the date and then subtract the old date. And in Excel, this will give us the number of days in between these two dates, which tells us the number of days in this entire fiscal year. I will anchor the five parts here so that we can easily copy and paste this formula down. Now for the days inventory outstanding, since COGS is right below revenue and since inventory is right below receivables, we can actually just copy and paste this formula down. And the date part stays the same because of how I anchored it, but cost of goods sold and inventory, the formula shifts to both of these instead. And then for days payable outstanding, we can do something very similar, except here we get to divide by zero error. I need to change this part of the formula, the F14 and make it F13 instead. So it links to COGS instead. I'm also gonna put a negative sign in this because we want to subtract the days payable outstanding in this formula. So let's just sum these up and we get to the cash conversion cycle here and it is extremely low. It's under five days and it's actually negative in two of the years here. If we look at the Costco numbers, the cash conversion cycle is also very low. It's under five in all cases and it's actually negative in one of these periods. So the numbers here are very low. They sometimes have negative cash conversion cycles, which is quite common for large retailers with significant pricing and market power like these or Amazon, for example. These companies do trade at different multiples, but I think it's a stretch to say there's any valuation impact from the cash conversion cycle here because the cash conversion cycle numbers are very, very close. And Costco does trade at higher multiples. It trades at about 1.2x revenue versus more like 0.7x for Target. But I don't really think the cash conversion cycle here could possibly explain that. It has to be related to growth rates or margins or competition or store performance or things like that. Now let's go into the valuation impact. Does the cash conversion cycle matter for any of this? And the answer is technically yes, because it does affect a company's change in working capital, which is a component of free cash flow. There's unlevered free cash flow, free cash flow to equity, free cash flow to firm. But no matter what type of free cash flow you're looking at, the change in working capital factors into that. But for most companies, this change in working capital is not a major valuation driver. It's more of a supplemental item that makes a pretty minor impact overall. So higher and lower cash conversion cycles by themselves are unlikely to seriously affect valuation multiples for most companies. But if you have a company where working capital is more significant, then the cash conversion cycle could actually affect the free cash flow and the free cash flow conversion. And the free cash flow conversion just refers to how you can take the free cash flow and divide by EBITDA to see how much of that EBITDA it's actually converting into real cash flow each year. So it could potentially affect something like that. So you could have a scenario where maybe one company has a much lower cash conversion cycle than the other because it's more efficient. Therefore, its free cash flow is higher. More EBITDA gets converted into free cash flow. Therefore, its valuation is higher as a result. But I still think this is a pretty far-fetched scenario because even if this is true, so many other factors affect the valuation more, such as growth rates, margins, margin expansion, how much they're spending on capital expenditures. So while this can play a role, it's very difficult to find two companies that are exactly the same, but one simply has higher or lower multiples because of differences in their cash conversion cycle. Let's go to part three and talk about when the cash conversion cycle might be useful in real life. I think the first case where it's useful is when you're looking at small businesses or startups that depend heavily on inventory. In these cases, the trends in the cash conversion cycle could indicate when a company might need to raise capital or otherwise get more cash by selling assets also, if you're looking at a distressed company that might be facing a cash crunch, the cash conversion cycle can also be useful there. These companies often find it harder to collect from customers, and they may sometimes get squeezed by suppliers who impose onerous payment terms because of the financial state of the companies. So if we go to the other examples tab here in the Excel file, I have an example on screen. One company here maintains a pretty steady cash conversion cycle between 25 and 30 days over six years. This other company starts out at 25 days, but goes all the way up to 63 days by the end. And as a result, even though the companies are similar in terms of EBITDA going from 70 to 95, their free cash flow and cash flow from operations numbers are actually quite different. One company goes up to 75 for cash flow from operations. The other company only goes up to 59 and the free cash flow conversion is much worse for the company with a much worse cash conversion cycle. So in that sense, you could see an impact, but Again, I think this is a little bit far-fetched because you're probably not gonna find two companies that are exactly the same except for their management of working capital. So that's about it. Let's do a quick recap and summary. 
We went through the cash conversion cycle calculations for Target and Costco here. Overall, it is pretty simple. You wanna start with the average receivables, inventory, and payables in each period. Then you calculate the D's sales outstanding, D's inventory outstanding, D's payable outstanding. DSO plus DIO minus DPO gives you your cash conversion cycle. Overall, there tends not to be a huge valuation impact here because a lot of these companies have very similar figures. And even if they don't, usually there are other factors that explain the differences, like different revenue growth rates, different margin profiles, different capex requirements, and so on. It can be useful, though, when you're looking at small businesses or startups or growth companies or distressed companies, any case where there might be some type of cash crunch and where the company is heavily dependent on inventory and collecting cash from customers and paying suppliers, the cash conversion cycle could be useful there.